Hello, pre algebra students. This is Mr. Jimini. This will probably be broadcasted or posted to the blog Monday morning, so I don't know how many of you will see this. But in any instance, it's something that you can access and see and get a little bit more insight or a little bit more confidence as you go into the quiz coming on Tuesday, which may be, and you'll probably be happy for this, may happen on Wednesday because I have not received the quizzes yet. But that is not your fault. So don't worry about that. So looking at two, uh, actually going to have four questions here, but these two on this front page here are actually right from your weekend practice from combining like terms. I had a lot of questions on these. An item costs X dollars. The tax rate is 5% of the cost of the item, or 500 times X. Write and simplify an expression to find the total cost of an item with tax. As I've talked to a lot of you, I said, when you go to buy something, do you really pay what it says on the sticker? And I've said, no, Mr. Jimmy, and that's exactly right. You're paying more than what it says on a price tag, typically. Now, we know that something costs X dollars. So you're going to buy a new pair of pants. They cost $100. Hopefully, you're not buying those. But the tax rate is 5% of, of means in mathematics times. So it's 5% of the cost of the item. So not only are you paying for the item, you're also paying for 5% of that item's cost. So you are actually paying more. So you're paying 5 hundredths, or 5%, of the cost of the item. Write and simplify an expression to find a total cost of items with text. We have to write and simplify. It does not say solve. It just says write and simplify. Now, you have to pay that 5 hundredths of a percent Oh, I'm sorry, five hundredths of the price of the item as tax of the item. But you also have to pay, on top of that, the price of the item itself. So you just don't pay the tax and you get to walk out. So for $100 pants, 5% of 100, what is that? Oh, 1% would be a dollar. So f you don't just pay $5 for it. You actually have to pay plus the actual initial cost of those pants before the tax was added. So we'll call it, that's called X. Now we've written this and now we need to simplify it. Well to simplify this you really have again it's understood that there's one X here. So you have one X plus five hundredths of an X so what you really have is one and five hundredths X. So really you're paying one hundred and five percent of the price of the item because you're paying that five percent tax. The same way we add tax, we also, in a inverse manner, take away for discounts and things of that nature. So, a sweater costs D dollars at regular price. The sweater is reduced by 20% or two tenths of D, two tenths times the original price of D. Write and simplify an expression to find the cost of the sweater before tax. So now we don't have to worry about tax. So we know the sweater costs D dollars. But it's being reduced, so reduce in my mind means subtract. And we're subtracting 20% or 2 tenths of D. So what I am doing is I am now saying, okay, so the original price was D, but hey, it's being reduced. Reduce means subtract. So I'm subtracting from that 2 tenths or 20% of the original cost, which is D. So 2 tenths of D. So now I have written my expression. So now I'm simply going to simply I'm going to simplify it. So I now have this again is understood to be one D, so I have one minus two tenths, or essentially I have a hundred minus twenty. So now I have eight tenths. So I am paying I am paying eighty percent of the original price. Now again, this is the key here before tax. Once it's for once tax is added on, this will go up a little bit. Another one. Consecutive integers, consecutive, one after the other after the other. So one, the next integer is two. The next one is three, then four. They're consecutive. They come in order. Consecutive integers are integers that differ by one. You can represent consecutive integers as x, x plus one, x plus two, and so on. So I could take five. The next integer is five plus one, so that's six. The next integer after that would be taking the original, which is five, and adding to two, I get seven, and so on. So the next one would be x plus 3 or 5 plus 3, etc. Write an equation. So now we're writing equations. I have to have an equal sign and solve. So I have to find out what the variable equals to find three consecutive integers whose sum is, sum tells me addition, is 33. Okay, so three consecutive integers. So they told me, hey, start with x. 
Okay, but it says here, find their sum, so I must be doing addition, and I know when I add them all, it's going to equal 33. So I have x, my first integer, plus my first integer, plus one more to get the second one. So again, if this were 5, 5 plus 5 plus 1. So if you think of what is 5 plus 5 plus 1, 5 plus uh, 1 is 6, so 6 plus 5 is 11. Look what I have here, 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So we're doing those consecutive integers. Plus x plus 2, the integer that is 2 away from the initial one. Now that all together equals 33. Okay, combine like terms. I say I have 3x's, there's all plus signs, and I see I have two whole numbers. Okay, let's combine like terms. 3x plus 2 is equal to 33. Oh, not plus 2, Scott, or Mr. Jimmy. 1 plus 2 is 3. Always good to check your work. There we go. Okay, I am going to, I want to evaluate for 1x, not 3x's, but before I ever do that, I need to get anything away from this x. Initially, that's not a coefficient. Well, this is a whole number, so I'm going to get rid of that integer there, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Cross out, I have 33 minus 3 is 30, equals, I still have the 3x over here. Okay. Now I want to evaluate for 1x, not 3 of them. So to figure out for 1x, I divide both sides by 3. I'm going to do the inverse of what it tells me. I have x is equal to 10. If I want to try to substitute that in, I now have 10 plus 10 plus 1 plus 10 plus 2. 10, 10, 10. Since all addition it doesn't matter the order, it's commutative. That's 30. 30 plus 1 is 31. Plus 2 is 33. 33 checks 33. I'm going to erase this so I have some room to solve my next problem. Next one. Let's see what we have here. Let me grab my highlighter. Consecutive even integers. So now we're going even numbers. Can be represented by x. x plus 2. x plus 4 and so on. Write an equation and solve to find three consecutive integers, consecutive even integers, there you go, whose sum, there's that word sum, is 54. Okay, keywords here, is means to, it means equals, sum means add, so I have to add these three expressions, and all together when I add those three, they'll give me 54. So, x plus, x plus 2, plus, x plus 4 equals 54. Combine like terms, boys and girls. 1x, 2x's, 3x's. Plus, let's see if I can add my whole numbers this time correctly. 2 plus 4, that gives me 6, is equal to 54. Okay. 3 times something, which is the unknown, the variable, plus 6 equals 54. Okay, here's my coefficient. I am going to leave this alone. I cannot evaluate for 1x until I isolate at least these co this is a coefficient with the variable. So I'm going to get rid of the 6 first, this whole number. Try to simplify this a little bit more. So I now have 3x is equal to 54 minus 6. 54 minus 4 would be 50 minus 2 more because 4 plus 2 is 6. That's 48. Okay. Now, I don't want to know what 3x's are. I want to know what 1x is. So I divide both sides by 3. Okay, that gives me x is equal to 3 goes into 4 once with 1 left over. 3 goes into 18 6 times. All right, so x is equal to 16. To check this, I substitute back in. 16 plus, now I have 16 plus 2, which gives me 18, plus 16 plus 4, which gives me 20. I now have 20 plus 18, which gives me 38, plus 16, which gives me 54. 54 checks, 54. Hope this helps. Have a great weekend.